मोर देन वन मिलियन स्टूडेंट्स आर टेकिंग एडमिशन इन कंप्यूटर इंजीनियरिंग एवरी ईयर बट ओनली फ्यू थाउजेंड आर गेटिंग प्लेस इन देर ड्रीम कंपनी सो वट यू थिंक वट इज द रीजन बिहाइंड दिस एक्चुअली दिस इज ऑल अबाउट कंसिस्टेंसी एंड स्टेप बाई स्टेप गाइडेड प्रिपरेशन आई एम हैप्पी टू अनाउंस यू दैट आई न्यूरो इज कमिंग अप विद DSA Foundation course specially curated for product based companies. So if you are targeting for bank companies or any other product based companies, please join this free course. For more detail, check out the description. The classes will start from 24 Jan 5 PM. Best of luck. Hello everyone, welcome back to the DSA Foundation course specially curated for product based companies. this is this lecture is the part of the series of complete dsa course actually uh, this is the 10th 10th lecture and today we are going to cover sorting techniques so if you are new here let me tell you let me tell you okay this is the 10th lecture of this series and uh, if you have not taken previous lectures you can go in the link in the description and uh, you can join this course okay fine So okay, before even starting, please let me know if I'm properly audible or not. Please write in the comment section. Please let me know if I'm properly audible or not. Let me check out the comment. Hello, hi, Mandeep. Good evening. Hello, Nidhi. Hello, Karthik. Nice to see you people back. Okay, so for the new people who are new here, uh, again, okay, let me give a little bit idea about the. Let me give a little bit idea about this complete series. before moving on let me tell you okay this lecture is the part of complete dsa series we have already covered nine lectures so starting from motivation to study dsa time complexity asymptotic notation mathematical problems arrays matrices bitwise operator recursion searching techniques today we will cover that sorting techniques which is one of the favorite topic for interviewer if somebody want to ask the questions somebody want to really enjoy the interview then uh, they may pick the sorting techniques okay so after that okay uh, uh, we will cover link list hashing stack q tree graph greedy dynamics so all that important topic we are covering in this series and this series actually is free of cost and you can register in this series going in the description after going in the description you will find out the link and you can register it and if you are completing this series if you are taking all the lectures all the videos then uh, you will get certificate also okay fine fine further okay uh, uh, before the moving on let me tell you one more thing that okay in every lecture uh, we are starting from very basics and uh, we are going up to product based company problems okay means i'm starting from definition definition of uh, one particular topic and we are going till the advanced level so if you are a beginner you are welcome to this course if you are a beginner you are welcome to this course and if you are advanced learner still again you are welcome to this course because we are covering the main company problems product based company problems over here so you will get benefited if you are advanced learner if you are a beginner again you will get benefited you can join the session because i am starting every lecture very from very basics you do not need to know anything and one more thing let me add every lecture is independent of any other lecture so total we have 18 lectures and uh, this series i have planned such a way that if today we are covering sorting techniques so to study sorting technique i will not expect anything from you you do not need to know anything okay for every every lecture i have designed such a way that you don't you can take these lectures independently also okay fine so today lecture is really going to be very very important for you people you will enjoy lots of lots of information i will give you lots of important information actually it's the lecture will be just like uh, i will give you i will give you the like a uh, uh, the cream of the complete sorting techniques okay in 2 hours so this is going to be really beneficial for you 
let me take some questions from the chat section so i think there are some new people over here so you can ask the question yes so that i can reply like uh, nayan is asking is this dsa with python so nayan let me tell you in this series in this series i am using three languages c++ java and python all three all three so if you are comfortable in any language you can join the session even though let me tell you even though you are in any other language also you can join this session because dsa is more about logic building dsa is more about logic building after that okay uh, you can you can write the code in any language but still uh, still okay i am using three languages i will provide you the solution in three languages c++ java and python okay nayan uh, okay uh, so let me take one or two more question and then we will start how many sorting techniques uh, this question is uh, arindam mondal is asking how many sorting techniques i have to learn so today we will finish all the sorting techniques so whatever you need to learn we will finish all of them within 2 hours not need to worry satish is asking okay is there any paid co paid batch available this is the foundation course we are building our foundation here for product based companies for mang company we are building foundation in this course this is free of cost this is free of cost satish but uh, still if you want to go in more depth uh, then there is a paid course also you can check out the i neuron website there is a advanced dsa course over there you can check out that also so okay fine so uh, divya welcome back there are lots of people who were in the last lecture uh, karthik uh, this is uh, nobody ask about the interpolation interpolation search i don't see if some anybody ask about this topic ternary search okay you can say that uh, that you can cover ternary search fine okay yeah welcome back thomas good evening nice to see you people are again joining the session or oh, this is our 10th session and if you are joining it first time you can take the previous video also but don't worry for today's session i have already promised with you you do not need anything okay and we will cover lots of important interview questions today related to sorting technique fine so you will get complete idea about the sorting technique today complete idea you will get you will find it really worth to watch this 2 hours video if you are watching it later on even and if you are taking right now you will definitely enjoy it is this is in python sai is asking sai again i okay i'm repeating this series in this complete dsa series i'm using three languages c++ java and python you i will provide the code in these these three languages fine okay so let's start with today's session let's start with today's class with sorting techniques you will definitely find it i'm sure i'm sure you will find it really worthy to spend 2 hours here your 2 hours will be really you will enjoy because i'm going to provide you the most important informations about the sorting techniques okay so let's start with the type of sorting techniques so sort sorting algorithms means we want to sort the numbers we want to sort the number either in increasing or decreasing order so there are various algorithms available with us and uh, we can divide these uh, these numbers in two categories broadly i can categorize in two two categories one is a uh, comparison based comparison based sorting algorithm another one is non comparison based non comparison based so i am uh, i am categorizing all the sorting algorithm in two categories okay comparison based and non comparison based can you people tell me okay whoever know what are the comparison based sorting algorithm you please write in the chat box whatever is coming to your mind if you know write in the chat box that will be requiring your interaction will be requiring 
so please write in the chat box what are the comparison based sorting algorithm if you know if you know please write whatever you know so we will uh, okay i will create a matrix over here uh, i will write the complexity of these algorithms actually so let me make a space little bit more meanwhile you people please write in the chat box please write in the chat box please write what are the comparison based sorting algorithm so okay kartik is saying one is bubble sort yes bubble let me write bubble sort another one is selection sort he write fine selection sort another one is uh, okay keep thinking keep trying meanwhile let me convert this in the form of a matrix so that all the important information comes on one slide i am going to discuss all the sorting algorithms right now on this one single slide and the people who know about non comparison also they can also share over here what are the non comparison based sorting algorithm 1 2 3 so you can write you can write merge sort yes merge sort is also the comparison based actually insertion sort let me write first insertion sort next one is the okay merge sort merge sort next one is okay quick sort quick sort next one is okay heap sort so i'm taking just most popular one i'm taking most popular one there can be many other also like shell sort or many other uh, comparison based sorting algorithm are there but these are the most important one okay nobody going to ask out of this to you non comparison based let me see if somebody is saying non comparison based welcome back aman non comparison based okay like uh, counting sort counting sort radix sort these are non comparison bucket sort bucket sort so these are the different i have categorized the sorting algorithm in two category comparison based and non comparison based okay so these are comparison based these are non comparison based first of all first of all first of all what do you mean by comparison based how we are categorizing them how we are categorizing them what do you mean by comparison based and non comparison based let me tell you okay let me tell you so comparison based sorting algorithms are those algorithm in which we are comparing the algorithm like uh, in which we are comparing the numbers in which we are comparing the number to sort okay let me ask one question bharat welcome back can you please tell me bharat you please tell me bharat i am giving you two numbers 20 and 10 can you please uh, can you uh, can you tell me which number is which number is smaller which number is smaller 20 or 10 can you please write in the chat box which number is smaller can you please write in the chat box 20 or 10 which number is smaller 10 so how you find out how you find out 10 is smaller you must have compared them you must have compared them in your brain you must have compare you must have compare loknath welcome back pravin welcome to this series so you must have compare okay uh, which one is smaller which one is greater you must have compare you can see that okay 20 is greater you have compared here so if you are comparing if you are comparing the numbers with each other if you are comparing the numbers with each other for sorting for sorting let's suppose i am sort we are sorting it in increasing order so you compare them which one is smaller which one is greater and then you put according to that in a series in a sorted manner okay fine so if you are comparing the numbers with each other and then you are sorting the elements then that means you are using so comparison based sorting algorithm these all sorting algorithm these all sorting algorithm will compare the numbers with each other they will compare the numbers with each other okay fine fine that's look that looks means uh, uh, means uh, there is no there is no no magic look in this this looks means common sense that we will compare the numbers then we we can they say that okay which one is smaller which one is greater we we need to compare the number but this person these people these three people are shouting immediately they are shouting they are saying that you give us number you give us number 
we will not compare them we will not compare them can you tell me which one is smaller which one is greater can you tell me they will tell they will tell these people these three people are saying that we will not compare the number with each other still we will tell you which one is smaller which one is greater okay so these are non comparison based these are non comparison based they will do some magic they will do some magic and uh, after doing some magic they will find out which number is smaller which one number is greater let's we will see okay what type of magic they will do can you think okay can you people think uh, uh, without comparing the number how you can say that okay which number is smaller which one number is greater can you think about it can you write in the chat box if something coming to your mind without comparing the number how you can tell okay which one is smaller which one is greater if anything coming to your mind you can share otherwise okay based upon this these two things we have divided our sorting algorithm in two categories one who are comparing the numbers with each other and then finding okay which one is smaller which one is greater and here we are not comparing this is a non comparison based name is itself is there non comparison based they are doing something they are they are doing they are doing uh, some magic and they are finding okay which one is greater which one is smaller we will see okay what they will do but before that okay let's complete one important matrix over here let's find out the time complexity i'm talking about time complexity of all these sorting algorithm let's talk about time complexity so i'm writing over here you people please tell me uh, I, i will leave leave some of the spaces i will fill maximum of them but i will leave some of the spaces you need to tell me what are those spaces like here you people please write in the chat box what is the best case bc means best case complexity of bubble sort average case worst case wc uh, worst case fine you need to tell me okay what is the best case complexity of bubble sort average case is n square average case is n square worst case is also n square worst case is also n square selection sort selection sort okay best case is best case is n square average case is also n square worst case is also n square okay you need to tell me what is the best case complexity of bubble sort whatever you know you can write in the chat box whatever you know you can write in the chat box so we get two answer see here uh, maybe uh, okay fine so insertion sort okay i am not going to tell this one also i am leaving those only which are important which are asked in interview actually i am leaving those questions which are asked in interview okay other ones i am filling up other ones i am filling up insertion sort average case is n square in sensor sort worst case is n square fine fine merge sort best case n log n average case n log n worst case n log n all all of them n log n n log n n log n quick sort best case n log n average case n log n worst case this is the interview question this is the interview question let me leave it to you people please keep filling please keep writing in the chat box keep replying keep replying you can use the google also you can use the google at the back end and you can reply you can use the google at the back end and you can reply if you don't know if you know you can just directly you can tell uh, heap sort best case n log n average case n log n worst case n log n okay fine so this is the best case average case and worst case of these comparison based sorting algorithm and if we talk about these three sorting algorithm they are they are actually let me write over here their best case is equal to average case is equal to worst case all are actually all are for all these three algorithm is n that is n only all these three people are taking n time only all these three people are taking n time to sort the n numbers to sort the n numbers these people are taking different different time based upon best case average case worst case fine okay so let me take some answer from you people you are saying that you are saying that like here 
uh, am I able to rub it? Let me see. So here, actually, bubble sort. Uh, if you will check out the on the internet also, so you people are replying n. Fine, I'm taking the answer n, but uh, that that can be n square also. That can be n square also. Okay, that can be n square also. How we will discuss about that? So that can be n square or n. We will how that is we will discuss. Insertion sort. You people are saying n. Insertion sort best case is n. Insertion sort best case is n. Order of n. Big O of n. You can say. Okay, fine. And uh, quick sort. What about the quick sort? If anybody tell yes, Sneha, welcome to this series. Sneha, welcome to this series. So Sneha is saying that. Sneha is saying that the complexity here is n square. The complexity here is n square. Fine, okay. At least now we know. Now at this pre present, at this moment of time, we know what is the time complexity of all the sorting algorithms. We know. We know this thing now. Okay. Based upon this, let me ask you some questions. Some interview questions. Let me ask you. First of all, uh, first of all, okay. Let let's remove this dilemma. Bubble sort complexity is n or n square. If somebody will ask you in interview, if somebody is asking you in interview, what is the bubble case best, best case time complexity? Then what you can see, what you can say is that the bubble sort best case time complexity is n square. How much? n square. But we can improve it to n. But we can improve it to n. Okay. So there may be people. The same question will be asked to many students. That will be asked to many students. Interviewer will ask the same question actually to everyone who whoever is sitting in, in into the interview. So he is asking, what is the bubble sort complexity? One student will say, n square, sir. Another will another one will say, order of n, sir, n. Third one will come. He will say, sir, the complexity is n square, but we can improve it to n. So he will be get selected. He will be get selected who is making this statement because he understand actually what is actually happening behind the scene. He understand what you mean by this statement. He understand that, okay, bubble sort, actual bubble sort algorithms take n square time. Actual uh, bubble sort algorithm take n square time, but using the flag, using a flag, if you people know, using a flag, we can improve it. We can improve it. We can improve it to order of n. We can improve it to order of n. Fine. We can improve it to order of n. One thing is that. Okay. Okay. Another question. Another interview question. You keep people, please keep thinking and keep replying. Okay. Uh, which is the, okay, which is out of all the, all these comparison based sorting algorithm, all this comparison based sorting algorithm, which is the best sorting algorithm for large input, for large input, for large input, which is the best sorting algorithm out of these sorting algorithm, which is the best sorting algorithm out of these sorting algorithm. Can you, can, can anybody tell me right in the chat box, whatever is coming to your mind, you can use Google also if you want. You are allowed to use Google if you don't know. If you know it, write in the chat box. What are, and whatever coming to your mind, you can share that also. That is also welcome. Even though, see, I have shared with the complexity with you people. I have already shared with you the complexity. You do not need to go anywhere. You can see the complexity. You can compare the complexity and you can come up with the answer. You can come up with the answer. Okay, which one is going to be the best sorting algorithm, which is taking less time, which is taking less time. That is the best sorting algorithm. So, Karthik is saying that heap sort, Gagandeep, welcome to this series. So, if you are new here, you can uh, you can enjoy this session. After this session, you can uh, join this complete series also. After going in the comment, after going into the comment section. So, some people are saying quick sort. Some people are saying mud sort. Some people are saying heap sort. Okay. So three, three, three answers we have now for this question, which is the best sorting algorithm 
for if the input size is large let me give you right now i'm giving you answers right now directly okay so the best sorting algorithm is the quick sort the best sorting algorithm out of all these sorting algorithm if the input size is large then best sorting algorithm is the quick sort name is also quick sort if this is not the best sorting algorithm then uh, how they can write the name quick maybe we can put a case on them you are not best why are you writing quick actually this is the best sorting algorithm for the large input for the large input for large input this will this will take the this will take the just a minute fine okay so this will uh, for large input quick sort is the best sorting algorithm actually okay so there may be a question then there may be a question then over here there may be a question over here that the people are saying that merge sort is uh, if we compare the time complexity if we compare the time complexity see here see the time complexity over here see the time complexity over here so if you compare the time complexity of merge sort quick sort and heap sort for the best case and average case that is same n log n n log n n log n okay these people are okay n square is larger than n log n so these are out of the race these people are out of the race now these three people are left only who are saying that okay we are the best we are the best they are shouting these three are shouting okay now we compare the best case complexity that is same for all of them average case that is same for all of them now when we compare the worst case when we compare the worst case we find out that this is taking more time n square is bigger than n log n then why still i am saying that quick sort is the best sorting algorithm quick sort is taking more time than the merge sort as well as heap sort okay but how we can how we are saying that okay quick sort is the best sorting algorithm actually actually uh, in quick sort uh, when okay when you will study the quick sort you will find out that in quick sort in quick sort we do not compare we do not compare the half one side element with other half element this is very important point actually if you will give this point in the interview 100% you will be get selected what is the point okay i am repeating again if we let me compare it with the merge sort in the merge sort and quick sort we apply the divide and conquer approach means we divide the array in half okay we divide the array in half in merge sort we divide it in quick sort also we divide doesn't mean that okay every time in half only in quick sort in merge sort every time we divide in half only okay but still okay we divide the array here also and here also quick sort also merge sort also we divide the array in half okay okay here in merge sort in merge sort we in merge sort in merge sort actually we compare the left half elements with the right half elements we comparing left half elements with the right half elements in merge sort left half elements are compared with the right half elements okay but in quick sort we are not comparing we are not comparing left side elements left half elements we are not comparing with the right half and we are doing this in the complete algorithm in the complete algorithm we will keep dividing into half 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 and here you will be keep comparing left half with the right half in the merge sort okay but here you are not comparing here you are not comparing and when the input size will be, will be very large asymptotically okay this may lead to asymptotically this may lead to n log n asymptotically this will be n log n and this is okay n square here what is happening is, is actually here what is happening is half of the element you are not comparing with other half so listen this carefully this is very important point half of the element half of the people are not compared with other half 
this is a very big difference actually this is a very big difference asymptotically okay again you will get the complexity of n log n n log n why we are writing n square here there is only one case there is only one case due to which we are writing n square anybody know what is the when quick sort will behave worst there is only one scenario there is only one scenario when quick sort will behave worst I mean quick sort will take n square time do anybody know anybody know so whatever i'm talking right now all things are very very important from interview point of view let me tell you whatever i'm single line i'm speaking that is very important for interview point of view okay because i'm directly i already tell you i'm giving you the last thing in the sorting algorithm right now in this session so do anybody know what is the worst case worst case uh, of quick sort when when quick sort will take n square time so quick sort will take n square time when the array will be sorted if you are giving it's like that okay you are saying to the quick sort quick sort i am giving you the sorted array you are giving a sorted array to the quick sort okay and asking him can you please sort these numbers then quick sort will go mad he will say that you are giving me sorted element to sort i will take n square time i will take n square time so quick sort take n square time when you are providing the sorted element to him okay then only he will take n square time otherwise that will take n log n time otherwise that will take n log n time. only one case is there when array is sorted so this is rarely this happens rarely that you are giving sorted element to sort to someone okay if you are giving already sorted elements asking to can you please sort it and uh, in that case quick sort will behave worst means n square time that will take otherwise quick sort will take n log n time even asymptotically still you may be you are you may be you may say still you can say that you can say that still this is also taking n log n time this is also taking n log n time okay still both are same both are same okay only one case is there when this is taking n square time when array is sorted when array is sorted but let me remove this point okay okay we leave this point we say that okay we will not give you sorted element then you can ag again ask the question you can say that sir still still this is also taking n log n time and this is also taking n log n time how you can say that still how you can say that quick sort is the best sorting algorithm and the reason is that asymptotically these are equal asymptotically asymptotically okay but this will take half of the time this will take half of the time as compared to this two is constant in asymptotic notations we have already studied we can remove the constant factor so we can remove the two here both are belonging to same class n log n asymptotically asymptotically okay but if you're not looking asymptotically this will take half time why half time because this is not comparing half of the element with other half and this person is comparing so asymptotically this is looking same but this is for large input if you will check out for large input this will definitely will take less time because reason is clear reason what is the reason this is also dividing the array this is also dividing the array but this is comparing left side elements with the right side elements to sort them but this is not comparing this is saying that okay i will not compare the left side element with the right side element so 50% 50% comparisons are not there completely gone 50% you are taking it lightly it's not it's it's not a easy point i don't know how to prove it maybe i can break this screen and i can show you okay this is the this is very means great point 50% comparisons are gone completely although although dividing with two and here we are not dividing with two you can say that okay two is constant you can remove that asymptotically both are same but this is this will definitely will take less time when you will give large input when you will give, give large input quick sort will be the best sorting algorithm will behave that will take the minimum time only one exception is there in which that is taking n square time what is that exception when when the array is already sorted so means he will definitely go mad if i will ask you okay if i will ask you like i was asking which number is greater 20 or 10 you must have gone mad bharat must have gone mad that okay sir what is the silly question you are asking out of 20 and 10 which is greater which is greater 
so like quick sort can also go mad when you are providing sorted elements okay and asking him can you sort it then he will say that okay then now i will behave worst i will take n square time so only one case is there when quick sort is taking this much time otherwise quick sort is taking even half time okay then the merge sort okay so quick sort is the best sorting algorithm one thing done done we done with this question any question coming to your mind immediately ask your questions are very important because your question will help to other people also otherwise let me ask you second interview question let me ask you second interview question from here let me ask you second interview question for large input for large input which, which is the worst this time i'm asking about the worst worst sorting algorithm which is the worst sorting algorithm for large inputs best sorting algorithm quick sort best sorting algorithm quick sort which is the worst one which is the worst one out of these out of these which is the worst sorting algorithm any idea you can write in the chat box we can just uh, we are just communicating with each other okay you can write whatever is coming to your mind you can write whatever you think that okay this might be this not look nice his name is already bubble this bubble one will always will definitely will take more time yes bubble sort will take the maximum time for large input out of all this sorting algorithm bubble sort will take maximum time again you can ask me if i will be the interviewer i will ask you another question then immediately i will ask you the another question i will say that bubble sort is taking n time bubble sort is taking the n time if i compare it usually we compare the bubble sort with the selection sort we compare the bubble sort with the selection sort because they are these two are same average case and worst case are same okay then we compare them then we what if we talk about the best case then this is taking n time this is taking n square and still we are saying still we are saying bubble sort is the worst bubble sort okay this these are matching this is taking n time this is taking n square still we are saying that bubble sort is the worst one how divya is saying how why java is saying why that's a nice question so why bubble sort is the worst one okay why bubble sort is the worst one actually let me tell you one thing first of all there is only one case there is only one case in which bubble sort will take n time there is only one case in which bu bubble sort will take n time which take minimum time there will be only one case what is that case when array is already sorted when array is already sorted that is the best case of bubble sort when array is already sorted except this case except this case bubble sort will always take n square time except this single case bubble sort will always take n square time okay one thing is this one thing you can notice this bubble sort will behave good n time that will take less time only in single case when complete array is already sorted okay otherwise that will take n square time n square time n square time one thing i tell you still you can ask me still you can ask me sir okay so okay let's we uh, we we take your point but still this is also n square and this is also n square this is also n square n square still how you can say that okay bubble sort is the worst one both are taking n square time both are taking n square time actually now you need to know okay how bubble sort work and how selection sort work let me tell you directly the answer okay yeah divya i'm coming to the same question so let me highlight your question over here so first thing is clear only one case in which bubble sort will take n time that is the array is sorted it's fine but all other cases actually bubble sort will take asymptotically might be both are taking same time asymptotically both are taking n square n square n square asymptotically both are taking same amount of time but if i if, if we, i do not talk about asymptotic notation then selection sort will take less time if i am not talking about asymptotic notation then selection sort will take less time okay then maybe interviewer can ask you can you please elaborate it can you go in more detail i am going in more detail you can take this point and uh, you can stop it here itself if you want otherwise if you want to
take more point you can take it if you don't want you can leave okay fine i am adding more information otherwise i am saying that asymptotically both are same asymptotically both are same but if we don't see asymptotically selection sort will take less time one thing one thing you can take it and you can finish this topic okay otherwise we can go in more detail whenever 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 we find out the time complexity of sorting algorithm is actually of any sorting algorithm any sorting algorithm you take any sorting algorithm there are two major factor time complexity of any sorting algorithm sorting algorithm any one depend upon two major factors depend upon two major factors one is number of comparisons how many you need to compare the elements you need to compare the elements and after comparing one is that this operation you need to perform you are comparing the elements with each other and deciding which one is smaller which one is greater okay and after that you are swapping the elements second operation these are the only two major operations you are performing in every sorting every all these sorting algorithm you are performing these two operations only you need to compare the elements you, you need to swap the elements so that you can pick the smaller element and put it in the front and larger element at the back so these are the two major operations let me tell you i'm i'm directly telling you right now in the case of bubble sort in the case of bubble sort number of comparisons you will make n square number of comparisons you will make n square and swap will also be n square both are n square so the time complexity is how much 2 into n square so i can write okay asymptotically that is n square i can remove this two i can remove this two okay but in the case of in the case of selection sort in the case of selection sort number of comparisons will be number of comparisons will be n square again same as this same as bubble sort plus but number of swaps will be n number of swaps will be less that will be n okay so how much is the time complexity n square plus n is how much asymptotically i can say that that is n square so both are taking n square time asymptotically asymptotically because this plus this is actually n square only we will take the bigger factor and here n square plus n square is 2 n square still this is n square but this factor is very large as compared to this as the size of the input will grow as the size of the input will grow let's suppose your input size is uh let's suppose n value is 1 lakh c here you are taking 1 lakh swaps operation you are performing 1 lakh swap operation for these number of elements 1 lakh and input but here 1 lakh square 1 lakh square 1 lakh square is very very large very very large as compared to 1 lakh okay so if we are looking asymptotically you can say both are taking n square time but if you are not looking asymptotically then selection sort is behaving better why because number of swap operations are less over there number of swap operations are less over there again okay we can go in more detail actually how this is all happening how this is all happening how uh, can you find out the number of comparison and number of swap okay this is your homework this is your homework i'm not going in further detail this is your homework you need to know actually for this how bubble sort works you need to know for this how section sort work i just give you the top view of the i actually give you the answer directly i'm just i'm not going in the proof how this is taking n time how this is taking n square swaps how this is this is taking this much this much but right now i'm telling you the solution directly okay you just take it and you you can tell now you can in, immediately you can tell if you are not looking asymptotically bubble sort will behave worst and why the reason is number of swaps are more here number of swaps are more here as compared to this one this one why i am not going in more detail right now why i am not going in more detail because because i want to cover all the important point point about the sorting techniques all the important points okay so now you know you have the map in your mind okay you even know the answers also now you must have uh, curiosity that okay how this is how this is coming n how this is coming n square so you can find out this yourself 
okay fine okay uh, you can find it yourself otherwise i have given given you the answer any doubt in this you can ask me anything coming to your mind still okay i will give you the answer please ask the questions so i just right now i ask you two questions i will keep adding more and more questions okay i will be keep adding more and more questions meanwhile you can ask me more questions okay let me ask you more questions more interview question so let me erase it i need to erase it fine so this answer have we have already given this question answer we have already given why selection sort is better than the bubble sort because selection sort number of swaps in selection sort are n and number of swaps in bubble sort is n square so that is the only reason why selection sort is better than the bubble sort okay so this answer we have already discussed let me ask another question from you people so this is the another question of, from amazon can you tell me what is the can you answer this question please can you answer this question please try to answer you can use the google also if you know don't know try to answer in the chat box you are allowed to use the google and uh, if you know already you can write directly which sorting algorithm is best when array is almost sorted what do you mean by almost means one or two elements are not sorted okay almost sorted means only all array is sorted but uh, one or two elements are not sorted only okay then uh, which sorting algorithm is the best sorting algorithm can you tell me not quick sneha not quick quick sort we still will take n log n time quick sort in the best case will take n log n time okay so there is one algorithm which will take actually n time there is one algorithm which will take n time if array is almost sorted if array is almost sorted and that the answer is given by divya divya gave us the answer that is the insertion sort that is the insertion sort yes in insertion sort if we are providing almost almost sorted array means almost sorted means only some elements are not sorted still that will take order of n time and that is the best case this is the best case this is the best case of insertion sort if we are providing almost sorted array to the insertion sort insertion sort will take order of n time insertion sort will take order of n time let me tell you one more thing maybe you people may, may be using the sort function in c++ in built sort function is there in c++ many of them many of you must be using it okay in built sort function this function is also using this function is also using the this function is actually using the intra sort intra sort actually this is using three sorting algorithm one is quick sort why he is using quick sort this inbuilt function of c++ is using quick sort because he know that quick sort is the best sorting algorithm that's why they they, are, they have implemented the inbuilt function using this sorting technique this is the best one that's why they are using they are also actually not only this one they are also using the heap sort with it they are saying that okay whenever whenever you will ask me whenever you will ask me to sort the sorted elements whenever you will ask me to sort the sorted elements then quick sort will take n square time so in that case okay then they will use the heap sort so this code is also inside this function another one they are using is the insertion sort another one they are using the insertion sort because they know that because they know that okay whenever the array is almost sorted almost sorted some elements are not sorted okay all elements are sorted some elements are not sorted is such type of array we have then they will give this input to this this sorting algorithm okay the code is written such a way that they are checking up checking out the input if the input is already sorted if the input is already sorted 
then they are providing this input to the this algorithm. Otherwise, they, they, they are providing it either to the heap sort or quick sort. Okay. And this is the combination of all these three. This function is created by a combination of these three sorting algorithms actually. Okay. Any questions till now you please ask me. Your questions will make the session more interesting actually. Okay. Actually, there can be many, many questions over here. Uh, I do not want to take it from my side because right now I am not uh, taking you, let me tell you the truth for this session. This the, Only this session, let me tell you the truth. I am telling you the most important information. Okay. That is, that is truth. I am telling you the most important information about the sorting algorithm, but uh, I am not coming step by step. That is the truth. I'm 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 confessing. Okay, over here. I'm not coming step by step. I'm not giving you the proof of these things. But right now, I'm telling you. Right now, I'm telling you directly. So if you will ask me the questions, okay, then might be in that point I can go in detail. In that point, I I can go in detail. Yeah, in Python also we have sort function. In Python, uh, I'm not exactly know which. Uh, which uh, sorting algorithm they are using. Uh, Satish, you can uh, check out on the Google right now and you please write in the comment section. You please write in the comment section. In Java, I can tell you, in Java, the sort function, in Java, the inbuilt sort function is using heap sort. That is using heap sort. So, the time complexity used to use this is n log n in every, in every language, either C++, Java or Python. The complexity will be n log n. Whenever we will use a sort function, the time taken will be n log n. The time taken will be n log n. Okay. Okay. So, let me ask you one more question then. One more interview question. I tell you one thing. Uh, let me erase this board first. And then I ask you one more interview question. He, I, I tell you to I tell you that okay there are two type of two type of sorting techniques one is comparison based comparison based and another one were non comparison based non comparison based okay and I tell you that these non comparison based like uh, counting sort radix sort and bucket sort these were taking how much time these were taking maximum n time okay and these people these people are taking some people are taking n square time some people are taking n log n time some people are taking okay some people are taking n square time and some people are taking n square n log n time okay in the best case some people are taking n time okay in only like insertion sort is taking n time or bubble sort is taking n time in best case otherwise in all the cases, all the algorithms are taking either n square and n log n. Okay. So, this thing we know. And these people are in all the cases. Best case, average case and worst case. They are taking order of n time only. They are taking only order of n time. Now, here is a question. Here is the interview question. Okay. Uh, Satish, have, uh, Satish, I will share this information with everyone. Everybody can, everybody can check out this thing. Fine, okay. Uh, here is the question. Let me tell you the interview question. The question is like this. The question generate automatically. Automatically, the question is coming. Here, the time taken by non-comparison based sorting algorithm in all the cases is n. But the time taken by this comparison based sorting algorithm almost in all the cases except one or two cases of best case of insertion sort and bubble sort all the average case and worst case is taking either taking n square time or either taking n log n time. Both are greater than n. Both are greater than n. Okay. Now, let me ask you one question first of all. In software industry, which, which sorting algorithms are preferred? Comparison based or non-comparison based? Which are preferred? Which are preferred? These are preferred to solve the problem or these are preferred to solve the problem? I have shared the time complexity with you people. I have already shared the time complexity. And now I am asking which must be used in the software industry for solving most of the problem. Most of the problems I am talking about. 
most of the problem to solve which technique is used which algorithm is used this this category or this category what do you think what is coming to your mind what do you think what is coming to your mind divya says comparison based and divya do you have any reason comparison based are taking more time comparison based are taking more time and non comparison are taking less time and why you are saying comparison based everybody is saying comparison based but what is the reason they are taking more time why should we have to use this why should not this these are taking less time why not this this is the this is the question this is the question <laughs> okay uh because interview are asking more about divya says that because interview are asking more about comparison based so see what is the reason the reason is that yes you are right first of all we uh most of the problems in real problem real world problems are solved with the help of these these comparison based sorting comparison based sorting algorithms rather than these very few problems are solved we use these also but for few problems maximum problem are solved with this and what is the reason the reason is this actually not ease of coding mandeep not due to ease of coding this is more easier to code if you will check out the their code uh, then you will find out that counting sort is very easy okay these are very easy radix sort is only two line code okay and this is even uh, people find difficult it's not about ease of coding what is the reason okay reason why still we are using comparison based they are taking more time why not non comparison which are taking less time the reason is that the reason is that non comparison based sorting algorithms bound bound the user input non comparison based sorting algorithm bound the user input they have boundations they put the boundations these people don't put the boundation these people don't put the boundation okay these people put the boundation on the input these people put the boundation on the input okay for example let me tell you whenever okay let me let, let's suppose i'm asking i'm i'm asking the counting sort counting sort will you please sort sort uh, sort these two number for me i i i ask i'm asking i'm asking to the counting sort counting sort will you please sort this number and uh, uh, okay this another number 5 lakh two number i have Will you please sort them in uh, decreasing order or maybe increasing order? Will you please sort these two numbers? Then uh, counting sort will say, okay, I will sort these two numbers. I will sort these two numbers, but I will consume com your complete RAM. He is speaking like this to me. He is saying that I will sort the uh, your these two numbers, but I will consume your complete RAM. Then what I will do? I will I will say go to hell. i will say go to hell to sort my two numbers you are consuming my or complete ram actually this is the counting sort is saying that immediately he counting sort is replying that okay i am good at sorting small numbers i am good at sorting small numbers if you will give me small numbers like one digit number or maximum two digit number okay small numbers okay i am not limiting it but usually people use it for maximum two two digit two digit numbers up to 99 okay maximum practically so counting sort have the limitation that is bounding the user that is saying to the user you need to give me the small number we cannot bound the user the moment the moment you will bound the user 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 will throw your app out of the mobile immediately user will throw your software out of the mobile why there are many other options also to sort the numbers there are many other option other softwares also so you cannot you should not the software which is bounding the user the software which is bounding the user that is the worst software that is the worst software the so software which is giving freedom to the user that is the best software that is the best software so here they are bounding they are bounding i asked to the radix sort i asked to the radix sort will you please sort the number for me he is also bounding me he is saying that first of all you tell me how many digit you have in your number he is asking me this type of silly questions he is asking me how many digits you have in your numbers and i will say that go to hell go to hell you are asking me i'm just want to sort some numbers first i need to predict how many digits i have maximum how many digits i have then i will tell you then you will sort you please go we can use them we can use them whenever we are sure we are sure that we have 
we have numbers which are small already which are small already it's okay then we can use the counting sort because that will take less time when we are sure for specific reasons for specific constraints we can use them but not real life most of the problems don't have the constant these constants like numbers are smaller how many digits are there these type of constants cannot be put on maximum problems that's why software industry use comparison based sorting algorithm but still we use them whenever we are confirm that okay our problem statement fulfill their requirement then they will behave actually better than the comparison based they will take less time but uh, uh, these will be used for specific uh, specific in specific uh, for specific uh, problems okay fine space complexity if you are talking about these people are taking more space uh, non comparison uh, uh, algorithms are taking more space as compared to comparison based but these some of them are also taking more space like merge sort is taking uh, more space okay so okay if you are talking about um, space complexity so let me give you one more important point let me give you one more i hope you get the idea why we use the comparison based sorting algorithm the reason is simple is that these non comparison based sorting algorithms have the boundations they bound the user and that is the worst thing we can do if we are bounding the user okay but still we can use them when uh, we already know the constraints then we can use them basically we use like counting sort when we need to sort the alphabets we know that we are 26 alphabets only we have fixed number of alphabets 26 if we are if, if there is a problem coming in which uh, you need to sort the alphabets okay then uh, we use the counting sort actually we use the counting sort okay thomas is asking now one question which will be good for everyone please please keep asking the questions your question actually your questions uh, relate to many people my questions do not relate my question do not that much relate how much your question relate so please uh, keep asking the questions so thomas is asking which which sorting algorithm are, are the most important one although i have already trim I, i have already trim number of sorting algorithms only 6 are here and 3 uh, are here okay but still you want, if you want to trim then you can say that okay quick sort quick sort merge sort heap sort these are the these are the most important one if you will uh, if you are talking about from interview point of view or if you are talking about okay maximum problems ask from which one this is the most preferred one i have seen many 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 problem if you will go to any platform coding platform code forces lead code you will find out the large number of problems from this area heap from heap you will find out like priority queue or heap you will find out many many problems from here second number i i can give to quick sort you find out the uh, people ask the many question from quick sort in the company and third i can give to this and after that okay one more we can add that is the insertion sort so fourth place you can give to this fine and if you talking about a non comparison based then uh, okay counting sort is enough counting sort so we will find out the many problem related to counting sort that's it radix sort and bucket sort nobody is asking okay that is nobody i don't see anybody is asking this is the this is but there are many problem you will find out related to this one okay hashing is a, a technique actually um, in hashing we use the counting sort only okay so these are the most important one if you are still want to trim them okay fine okay divya is asking uh, for two digit or alphabet uh, non comparison will take less space no non comparison will take extra space either you are taking one digit either you are taking two digit okay how much uh, digit you are taking that will take extra space actually what is the problem with the counting sort is that let's suppose you you are providing it the numbers one digit number one digit number all are one digit number all are one digit number all are one digit number only one number only one number is there which is 1 lakh 1 lakh is there this is one number 
and all other numbers are like 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like this. Only one number is this much. Then your counting sort will take, do you know how much space this will take? This will create a temporary array of 1 lakh size. 1 lakh size array will be created. And let us suppose uh, this is, the, the, your numbers are in teaser, okay? You are giving in teaser. Then how much space you will take? See, 1 lakh into 4 bytes. This much space you will, your counting sort will take in memory to sort these numbers. Just why? Well, because of just only one number, one big number. Counting sort cannot handle the big number. That can sort it, but they will consume complete RAM. They, that will consume your RAM. We cannot. Uh, so, it's uh, so yes, extra space is taken every time. That will depend upon the maximum number. Let's suppose 9, 9, 9 is the maximum number. Let's suppose 9 is the maximum number which you need to sort. So, this temporary array size will be 9. 9 into 4 bytes, you can say, okay. The number of elements will be 9. So, okay, that, that, is, that is fine. That is fine. But still extra space is taken. This is the extra space. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. So, let's move on. Let's talk about now. Okay, uh, let's talk about now inbuilt sort function. So, inbuilt sort function is there in C, Java, and Python. All of have, them have inbuilt sort function. So, we will solve one problem using inbuilt sort function. So, C like sort function in C is a part of STL library. And uh, sort is actually unstable. Th this sort function is unstable, and uh, this stable sort is a stable. Okay, let me you let me explain two more term important terms. First of all, let me explain. Uh, first of all, you were uh, let's talk about this thing only: stable sort, unstable and stable. Anybody know what do you mean by stable and unstable? If you know, you can write. Otherwise, it's okay unstable. So, some algorithms are stable, some algorithms are unstable. What do you mean by this? Uh, what do you mean by this is that if, see, I am giving you a definition. I am giving you the definition of stable and unstable. I'm, uh, what is the definition? Definition is like that. If the input is a sequence, okay, let me write. If the, if input, input sequence input sequence of numbers is same as same as output sequence output sequence sequence then that sorting algorithm then that sorting algo is algo is stable so, if input, the sequence in which you are giving the input, let's suppose I am writing over, over here 5, maybe 2, 1, okay, another 5, 6, okay, 7, these are some number you want to sort them, okay. So, I am sorting it, I am sorting this number. So, there is an algorithm 1, algorithm 1, this is sorting the number. After sorting, this is writing like this, 1, 2, 1, 2. 5, 5, 6, 7. So, see, this number and this number having the same value, but uh, these are still different numbers. They have the same value 5, 5, but they are different numbers. So, to differentiate them, I am writing subscript 5a, 5b. Just to differentiate that, okay, these are two different numbers, although their values are same, their values are same. So, there is an algorithm which is sorting like this, okay. Just to differentiate, I write the subscript. There is another algorithm. There is an alg another sorting algorithm, which is sorting like this. Okay. 1, 2, 5B, 5A, 6, 7. Okay. So, the this algorithm 1, algorithm 1 is a stable sort. Algorithm 1 is using a stable sort. Algorithm 1 is the stable sort. What do you mean by stable sort? The sequence in which you give the input, the output sequence is also same. So, the sequence in which 
the elements are coming like 5a come earlier than 5b in our input this is our input and in the output also 5a is coming earlier than 5b so this is this algorithm is actually using the stable sorting this alg algorithm is using the stable sorting but algorithm 2 although this is also sorted 1 2 5 5 6 7 this is also sorted but here but here 5b is coming first here 5b is coming first then 5a is coming but in the input 5a come first in the but here 5b is coming first so this is not stable this is not stable although this is also sorting the numbers 1 2 5 5 6 7 but the input sequence get changed sequence get changed then this is non non stable this is non stable okay let me uh, uh, Okay, I hope uh, the difference is clear between stable sorting and unstable sorting, but uh, there might be one question in mind, okay, what means, uh, what the difference means? Here also this is printing 1, 2, 5, 5, 6, 7, here this is also printing 1, 2, 5, 5, 6, 7, then what is the difference? It is okay if uh, whatever manner we are printing, maybe actually that depend upon the application to application, maybe like I can give one example like if I am sending the signal. I am here, I am sending a signal to the satellite and satellite is sending signal to you, okay. I am sending the packets, data packets. I want that my data packet should reach in the same sequence in which I am sending. If I want this thing, then I will use the stable sort, then I will use the stable sort. But if this does not matter, okay, in which sequence I am sending the packets, that should receive you. If the sequence should not matter, then that does not matter. So it's like that, okay. I am uh, recording the video over here, and that video is going to the satellite, and yeah, that is reaching to you. Maybe I'm uh, sharing the same data, but for you the sequence matters. For you, sequence matters. You want that, okay? Whatever I'm speaking earlier, that should reach to you earlier, okay? So the packets that will reach to your end, your system actually is using the stable sort, is using sorting algorithm to sort the packets and that will sort using the stable sorting algorithm okay so this is the difference between okay stable sort and unstable this is telling that okay the inbuilt sort function is unstable inbuilt sort function is unstable but if you want to use the stable sorting algorithm if you want the same sequence of the input which same sequence in the output what was the input what was in the input then you can use this inbuilt function, stable sort, stable underscore sort function, inbuilt function. So I hope uh, I just tell I just tell you with the help of this what you mean by stable sort and what you mean by unstable sort. This is the only thing I tell you. This is the only thing I tell you. Okay. Any doubt you can ask me. This is the only thing I tell you. Okay. Maybe you can tell me. Maybe you can tell me. Okay. Can you give me some example of the how we discuss various various sorting algorithm. I will talk about comparison based only right now. Okay. We discuss various comparison based sorting algorithm. Can you tell me okay which one is the which one is the which one is stable and which one is unstable? One one example, okay. Give me one example. Bubble sort is stable or not? Bubble sort? Bubble sort? Yes, bubble sort is stable. Bubble sort will give the same sequence in which we are giving the uh, in which we are giving the input, the output will be in the same sequence. Even the same numbers are repeating, they will come in the same sequence. You can check out. You can check out. Bubble sort is a stable sort. Okay. So, let me see. Okay. This question you can write in the chat, in the comment later on after this, after this video. Please write in the comment section. Selection sort is, selection sort. Okay. Let me write. This is important actually. Selection sort is, I am asking that is stable or not, that is stable or unstable. You need to write the answer into the comment section after this sex, after this lecture, okay. Not in the chat section, in the comment section, okay. And this is important actually. And you need to, you can give me uh, uh, with the answer not only answer I need I need an, a C a, a input for which actually that will behave either this or this 
you need to give me one example to prove your answer you need to give the one example also fine okay so this is your homework and first of all the motive of this homework is that you need to think over this problem okay this is important this will be needing time little bit think over it use this question don't waste the question we should not waste the question don't immediately jump to the answer immediately you jump to the answer the question get wasted don't waste the question think over it at least 10 to 15 minutes then you can see the answer then it's okay then it's okay so okay fine so this is the question for your homework you can check out let me add uh, mm, let's move on okay now let's move on so we were talking about the sort function so okay uh, this is this is the important part so here uh, in this sort function we are passing the starting address of the array and uh, we are passing the okay last address so last address we are finding like adding with the array name array name store the starting address of the array array name store the starting address of the array okay so starting address start and end and is find out by array plus its length by finding array and its length fine fine okay so this is just we will use it okay this th this function we will use to sort the array in increasing order and uh, another one is uh, this one we will use to sort the array in decreasing order that's just we add one more thing this greater this keyword we add if you are adding this keyword also in the parameters of this function so this will sort the element in decreasing order okay and if you are not using this greater symbol greater keyword then this function will sort the elements in increasing order so we will use it in built in built functions we will use to solve one problem okay fine so let's move on now okay this points we have already discussed actually so this is a uh, sort function in java let me erase and show you Uh, you can write okay, okay just simply you need to pass the name of the array and this will sort actually this will sort the element in increasing order if you want to decrease sort in decreasing order then uh, you need to write okay reverse order collection dot reverse order you need to write if you want to write in decreasing order if you want to take an array and you want to sort you can uh, if you want if you have you if you have one array you want to sort that array then pass directly also we can we can sort the array list means here this is not array list this is simple array this is array list we are sorting so simply this these are inbuilt function okay fine let's okay come to this question now let's solve one question can you tell me what is the output of this can you people please tell me this is a very nice question ask in the intuit nice question let's use this question let's think about it and use it please think about it and use it i'm coming to meanwhile i'm coming to your some of the question ask in the chat section and uh, meanwhile you people please tell me what is the output if you are thinking that is the learning going on that is the learning going on so the question is asked in intuit can you answer this question please meanwhile okay let me check out some question like uh, no it's not like karthik that okay uh, sort is unstable so this will be unstable only it's not like that insertion sort is not uh, unstable actually insertion sort is stable okay and uh, let me check for heap sort heap sort is okay one question from divya divya is asking okay which is faster stable or unstable so actually 
based upon stable and unstable the time complexity doesn't matter okay it's it's just based upon the application it's just based upon the application time complexity will not be impacted by stable or unstable okay this is the only thing i want to tell you when you will use the stable when you want the same sequence in which you are giving the input okay then you will use the stable can you tell me what is the output over here now output keep trying that is important you need to try see you need to try if you want to learn the essay you need to try there is no other way i can try i can uh, solve this complete problem but uh, that uh, will not contribute in your knowledge let me tell you so whatever is coming to your mind just share that whatever is coming to your mind check out the problem statement understanding the problem statement is one of the task first first task is to understand the problem statement properly so that will come okay practice by practice okay let me go through the problem statement kartik is saying the answer will be true let's see if the answer is true or not yes the answer is true so let's see okay what this problem st statement is saying we have provided two arrays okay one is this and one is this fine both are of n size in this case the n is 3 number of elements are 3 okay and they have provided one integer also k they provide one in teaser k a k also fine the task is to check if after permuting both the arrays permuting means uh, you can arrange the element in any order you can arrange the element like 2 uh, 1 uh, 3 is here you can arrange 1 2 3 you can arrange 3 2 1 whatever way you can arrange any permutation you can make okay so the task is to check if after permuting after shuffling the elements if we get sum of the corresponding elements uh, if we are getting the sum of the corresponding element like this like zeroth element here and zeroth element in the b if sum of if we add them if the sum is greater than equal to k value so is this greater than equal to 10 k value yes this is greater than equal to 10 it's equal to 10 actually check for everyone for oneth place also is is 2 plus 8 is greater than equal to 10 yes this is greater than equal to 10 it's actually equal to 10 is this equal to 10 or greater than 10 yes so yes for every index this this and this all are greater than equal to k in this case both are, all are actually equal to k so yes this condition is satisfying for all the corresponding elements if this is happening we need to return true if we can make some we can make we can make some permutation if we can shuffle them such a way that their addition will lead us this condition will satisfy this condition then we will return true otherwise we will return false otherwise we will return false that's it this is the question this is the question i hope you understand if you don't understand please ask me the question please ask me or if you understand the please write plus one if you understand the question what is the question i'm repeating again they provide us two arrays they are asking us okay you please shuffle the element in any way whatever way you want maybe 1 2 3 2 2 3 1 3 1 2 whatever way you can write the elements here also 7 8 9 8 7 9 9 8 7 whatever way okay but after shuffling them after making some permutation when i will add the corresponding elements the the sum will be for everyone for every pair the sum should be either greater or equal to k either greater or equal to k so in this case yes this condition is satisfying for this this and this so for all the pairs this is satisfying so i will return true if that is not satisfying we will return false so what is the what is the idea coming to your mind how you will solve this problem how you will solve this problem what is the idea any idea coming to your mind 
think over it that is the learning part if you are thinking or not that is the learning part please think over it how you will how you will come any idea coming to your mind any idea otherwise okay 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 let me give you one idea you think over if that will work or not okay and you can contradict that you can contradict you can say that uh, for this example this will fail like that you can contradict okay that is also learning okay so the condition is like this i am giving you this is the hint i hope that is visible so if, if i'm adding i'm if i'm taking minimum element from first array and maximum from the second one then if this sum is leading to this condition i need to check this thing only if this is satisfying then i will say that okay i will say that yes this is true what i am saying is that sort this array in decreasing order okay let me write increasing order increasing order sort this array in increasing order like 1 uh, 2 3 and sort this array second array in decreasing order decreasing order so like 9 uh, 8 7 that's it after sorting you check the sum of this and this is 10 or not greater than or equal to 10 or not sum of this and this is greater than equal to 10 or not yes that is sum of this and this equal to greater than 10 or not so if i so if i will sort this element in increasing order and this in decreasing order and then if i will sum them and if that is satisfying then i will say true otherwise i will say false is this will work or this will not work is this work or not work or you can give me you can ask some question from here how you can how you can speak like this that okay uh how you how you can they say that okay if we are arranging them in increasing and decreasing and that will definitely will work how you can speak like this so whatever question coming to your mind you can ask me or whatever idea you have with you you can ask me mm. bharat give the same same logic bharat also uh, saying that okay that will work but why that will work bharat why that is working so maybe uh, this might be happen that okay what about if i have uh, two over here then uh, three over here then four over here so in that case okay this uh, this is greater than equal to 10 yes and after that we are we know that this number will be these two number will be greater because this is in increasing order these all other number will be greater only so if you are adding this greater number with these numbers which are smaller number then if you are adding these number with these number then okay if if i am making the combination of this 2 and this 8 if i am making a combination of okay maybe we can think like this if we are making the combination of these two and we are saying that okay this is 10 this is 10 why use 3 why use 3 if we can make 10 with 2 if we can make 10 with 2 we can speak like this we can speak like this okay but maybe later on there may be a number maybe there there may be a number okay which is zero which is zero so if you are randomly adding them like this then uh, this zero will create the problem to make 10 with this okay to make them 10 with this okay fine let me let me uh, add more clarity in this let me add more clarity fine okay 
So I'm giving one statement over here. Uh, let me remove this comment so that you can read the statement. I don't want to make it complicated. You can note this statement. You can note this statement. This statement is saying that this statement is saying that if this sum is not leading to k, if this sum is not leading to k, then even you replace this with any num, even okay, even you replace this with any number, you replace okay, you can say that okay, let's suppose the uh, uh, if this is not leading up to k, if this one plus nine is let's suppose not leading up to k, then what you can say okay, we can add two plus nine. 2 plus 9 that might can lead to k okay let's suppose k is 11 then you can say that okay this can lead to this can lead to 11 so even though these two are not leading to k we can leave we can get our answer actually we cannot get our answer why why see this, this is the only point this is the only point what i'm saying is that if this get failed k value is 11 okay k value is 11 and we are failing over here. If we are failing, we will immediately we will return false. This is our algorithm. Uh, what algorithm we are using? We are saying that we are arranging this in increasing order, this in decreasing order, and then we are summing these elements. If anywhere, if anywhere this sum is not leading to this value, we will return false. This is our algorithm. Okay. Now I'm saying that okay, let me fail your algorithm. How we can fail? I'm saying that you want to make up to 11. So, according to you, you are returning false, but I can add 9 with 2, I can add 9 with 2, I can make 11, I can make 11 over here, okay, yes, you can make 11 over here, but this is sure that you will fail in the future, how? Because you have 1 and these numbers are smaller, because this is in decreasing order, these numbers 8, 7 are smaller than 9, if 9 plus 1 is not 11, if 9 plus 1 is not 11, then how can be 8 plus 1 can be 11? How can be 7 plus 1 can be 11? That is not possible. Okay. So, if, so I can say that if this is not leading to the K, if these numbers are not leading to the K, then this number with any other number will also not lead to the K. Okay. So, this is the uh, reason, okay, I can give you. The same thing is written in this statement. You can check out it. You can check out it. How many people are able to understand? Please write plus one. And otherwise, please keep asking the doubt. The moment you ask the doubt, I become able to connect with you directly. Directly, I jump to the same point which where you are actually right now. So, ask the doubt or you can write plus one to indicate that, okay, we understand. Even you don't understand, okay? So let's uh, try to solve this problem. Although the uh, solution is already given by the Bharat, Bharat says that, sir, sort the first array. Maybe we are sorting it, uh, sorting this first array in ascending order, starting from A and going up to the last element. Okay, fine. So this is we are sorting in increasing order. Increasing order. We I am using inbuilt sort function. So another one I want to sort in decreasing order. So what is the form? What is the syntax? A A plus n, and uh, n is the number of elements actually. A length we are finding, and after that, okay, there is a keyword greater in C plus plus we use. So we we sort it in decreasing order. First array. Okay, this is the B array. This is the B array. So, A array is sorted in increasing order, B array is sorted in decreasing order. After that, what we can do? We can set a loop going through all the elements. And what we are doing? We, we can check, okay, if every index in the first array, this, the element at the zeroth position in first array, plus the element as zero position in second array, if this sum is less than k, if this sum is less than k, we will return false. We will return false. And after coming out of this loop, 
if we don't find anything like everywhere the number is this sum is greater than k then we will not return false after coming out of this loop we can return true that's it that's it so this is the code for this you can think over it you can think at home now okay uh, you can further think over it okay you can take different scenario and you can find out okay how this is really happening how you can take different scenario you can take a different scenario when you will think over it then more clarity will come to your mind okay there, uh, there is one question from satish if the array if the array smaller number cannot able to get equal to k value then big value with the big value then uh, the second big value cannot be able to equal to yes satish is giving the logic yes satish that is what we are uh, this is the main idea what you have also shared what is the main idea behind this problem so okay let me code it if you are still not able to understand let's uh, try to understand with the help of code let me go to the so this is the uh, this is the driver code uh, we have two array here with us one is a array one is b array we have taken the same same array actually the value is k here and uh, and after that okay we are calling a function is possible passing the elements a a array b array we are passing size of the array we are passing the and the and the k value we are passing so what we need to do here just sort the a array so let's sort the a array a starting from a going up to n a plus n so we sort that in increasing order sort the second array in decreasing order you can think about other logics also it's not the only logic you can think about other one even you will sort them in you can think okay let me give you one question and bharat is also i think asking the same one sort both array in ascending order add last element of both and compare with k without using loop okay i am coming to your question bharat before that okay let me complete this so b plus n and uh, i want to sort it in decreasing order so for that this is the syntax we use in c plus plus we write keyword greater and after sorting both the array one is this is in increasing let me write increasing order and uh, this is in decreasing and after sorting them just we are putting a loop starting checking for every element starting from 0 going up to n okay and what we need to do let me put the braces also for clarity if anywhere we find out sum of ith element in a plus sum of in b in b array of ith element if this sum is less than our k if this is less than then we will say okay return false why false because the answer is already given by satish satish says that because if that is not adding up to k then no other will add up up to up to k and after coming out of this loop if we are coming out of this loop means uh, everywhere condition satisfied then we can return true we can return true that's it so we can now submit this code so this is printing yes because we have already we have we have seen this array already what was the array what was the array so 213 Seven, eight, nine. This we already taken the example. Let's suppose I write one over here in place of three. I'm writing one. So this will not now. The answer should be no now, because uh, all elements will not sum up to ten now. So if I run it, and uh, the answer is no. 
Fine. Let's take some questions from here now. Let's take some question. First question, let me take from Bharat. That is actually a nice question. Bharat is saying that sort both the array in ascending order. Okay, let's do like what Bharat is saying. Bharat is saying sort uh, both the array in ascending order. Let me scroll it down first little bit. So let me do for this. Let's suppose three is here. Bharat three is here. Okay. So you are saying that sort the both array in ascending order. So one, two, three, and second one is seven, eight, nine. And after that, what you are saying? Add last two elements of both and compare them with k. So you are saying that add these two, and if this is reaching to ten, if this is reaching to this is greater than equal to ten, you are saying just simply return true. You are saying that do not need to compare with these elements. Other people, please verify. Is this logic will work? Is this logic will works? What Bharat is saying that just compare, sort them in increasing order. Let's think over it. Okay, sort them in increasing order. Okay, we sort them in increasing order, and he is just adding last two elements. And if this is greater than equal to ten, then we can say that okay, true. Otherwise, say false. can you fail this can you fail this somehow can you fail this yeah uh, okay if you are talking like this i think you uh, you are saying no right now so if you are talking like this this will not work why because there may be uh, there may be one over here this is still in ascending order 1 1 3 1, this is satisfying the condition but this is not 10 8 plus 1 is not 10 7 plus 1 is not 10 this this will fail this will fail why because uh, for 1 1 3 1 1 this will not satisfy this will not satisfy the sum will not be reach to 10 maybe 7 plus 3 can reach to 10 8 plus 2 will 8 plus 9 plus 1 will reach to 10 but 8 plus 1 will not reach to 10 so okay if we are talking like this thing we are both are in increasing order and comparing last elements only that will not work that will not work let me take other one let me take other one mandeep is giving something else okay uh, let me take 1 1 3 7 8 9 okay mandeep was giving that okay for this thing that will fail yes mandeep now uh, bharat is saying that okay uh, Take the second one in increasing order. Okay, we can change this. Means I can take this in decreasing order and this in increasing order. Let's try to take it. So I am taking it in increasing order. Okay, let's suppose here three we have. So increase decreasing order. Sorry, decreasing. I have reverse. I have reverse the order. So earlier I I was taking this is in increasing and this is in decreasing. Now we decreasing then increasing. Okay, decreasing three. Two, one decreasing, and the second one increasing. Seven, eight, nine. So is this work fine? Yes, this will also work fine. This will also work fine. So you can take any array in any order, but reverse of other, but reverse of other. Fine. Okay. Now, now, so. now bharat is saying that bharat is saying that first take in ascending order so bharat i am following you now you are saying that first take in ascending order first array i am taking this one in ascending order 2 1 1 fine and the second in descending order you are saying so 9 8 7 5 fine now you are saying that if this is summing up to 10 this is summing up to 10 okay then then uh, yes that will if this is uh, summing up to 10 then uh, definitely this number is greater this number is greater all will be summing up to 10 Okay, fine. So, can we fail it, other people? Can we fail it?
कैन यू गिव मी एनी केस ओके लेट्स अप्लाई इट लेट्स अप्लाई दिस लुक लॉजिकल ओके ओ सॉरी दिव्या यस दैट इज इन असेंडिंग ऑर्डर दैट इज इन असेंडिंग ऑर्डर यू आर सेइंग असेंडिंग ऑर्डर 1 1 और मे बी 1 1 3 1 1 3 फॉर दिस वन दिस इज फेलिंग फॉर दिस वन दिस इज फेलिंग असेंडिंग एंड डिसेंडिंग असेंडिंग एंड डिसेंडिंग फॉर दिस वन दिस इज फेलिंग बिकॉज दिस इज रीचिंग टू 10 बट दिस इज नॉट रीचिंग टू 10 for this this thing for this is failing bharat but what about but what about okay one more thing comes to mind now from what about if we write them in increasing order itself like 1 2 3 7 8 9 this is increasing order and this in decreasing 9 8 7 so this is in increasing this is in decreasing okay this is satisfying if this is satisfying then all must satisfy is this compulsory no this is not compulsory this is not compulsory Might be zero can be here. Might be zero can be here. So by checking only one condition, we cannot verify. You take in any order. By checking only last two elements, we cannot verify. Because let's suppose zero is here. Then here this is ten, but uh, this is not ten. So by checking just last condition, we cannot verify. yes you can take any combination you give me any combination okay again please give me any combination and uh, give me okay what you uh, in which order you want so input can be anything this am this is not fixed input okay input can be anything input can be anything for if we are taking in increasing order like this and this is in decreasing order maybe uh, maybe okay 8 7 so this condition is satisfying but this is failing and this is failing this is not 10 this is not 10 this condition is satisfying but this is failing this is failing okay fine okay one last thing i am discussing right now one last thing this will also work if you will write in increasing order both both of them in increasing order both of them in increasing order both of them in decreasing order that will also work let me write okay last thing last last thing i am taking from here both of them in increasing order so like 1 2 3 and 7 8 9 how this will work but this time this time you need to add let's suppose this is a array this is b array in the a array you need to add the zeroth element in the b array you need to add the last element okay in this case okay let me write nth element so add this and this these two and then these two and then these two so addition will be not of zero and zero but you need to pick the element from the last so this will work and both you can take decreasing order also but you need to change this index value so one one thing is sure one should be minimum and one should be maximum one from one array one element should be minimum one should be maximum okay this is the idea and with only by comparing single element not working not working fine okay so we have uh, analyzed it this uh, we have analyzed this problem you can practice this at home also let me move to the other problem now so we get the insights at least okay the people who want python code this is the same python code this is the code in python for the same thing we write in the decreasing order this is increasing order we execute a loop loop add it the number is if less than k return false otherwise return true same logic same logic just in python and uh, those people who want in uh, java so this is the java code but here notice that both are in increasing order 
this we are using increasing order approach see you can see here we are adding ai with bj so i is 0 and j is n minus 1 so both are in increasing order like 1 2 3 7 8 9 now you are adding 0th element with n minus 1th element so in this code we have used this approach fine let's move to the next problem this is for your homework this is again homework i will reply it in the comment after the after this uh, this lecture is over this is the microsoft co interview question you can note it these are very important questions you can note it and you can uh, think over it and you can answer it in the comment i will answer over there only okay one nvidia question very nice company to work with uh, great salary packages also so last question for today can you tell me what is the output for this input please check out the output please give me the output for this input keep trying keep replying dsa is just like math only dsa is just like math we need to try we need to reply that thing will only work that thing will only work please reply what should be the output check out the statement see this is the foundation course so i am telling you the important points about the topic like sorting itself i tell you uh, many you must have learned many new things over here uh, but still okay uh, if you want to go in more detail and uh, you want to go step by step and you want to do practice till the product based company if you want to want a course like uh, in which which help you to practice also which tell you all the concepts step by step every every concept actually step by step and uh, also you want to practice all possible combinations of the problems then uh, that is available in the advanced course you can check out that on the you can check out that advanced course on the iNeuron website Mandeep uh, I will accept your answer uh, not here but uh, later on in the comment I will reply over there okay fine so what is the problem let's see this problem last problem so they provide they say that you have three colors with you red white and blue they just give the number to them like 0 1 2 red white blue they are saying that okay arrange them uh, arrange them in like ascending order you can say you can say that okay put the same color all together like red together then white which is represented with one then uh, blue okay so just we, what we need to do they just provide one array in which we have three elements 0 1 and 2 only we need to sort it we need to sort it so what is the what is the how you can solve this problem how you can solve this problem you can do like this you can just put this array inside this sort function okay that's it this is sorted but this company is asking this question so they put a constant immediately they say that they say that the time complexity required required is order of n and this function actually take n log n time this function take n log n time to execute can you solve this problem in n time can you solve this problem in n time any idea coming to your mind how you will sort this array so what is the problem let me tell you what is the problem we have three element we have an array in which we have three type of elements zeros one and twos so we need to sort them in order of n time in order of 
n time. Okay, I'm going through it in little faster way now. You need to code it yours. I will share the code in the comment section. You can try it at home. This is the this is the main idea behind this. Let me execute this main idea over this array. Okay, last thing I'm telling you now. The, in this, actually, we will use a three pointer approach. We will use three pointer approach. Actually, first pointer will keep record of the zeros. Second pointer will keep record of the ones. Third pointer will keep record of the twos. Okay, you people, please keep helping me in this. Okay, so I'm taking a pointer P0, which is pointing to the first element. I'm taking a pointer P2, which will keep track of the two value two. So two must be come at the end. So I'm putting point this pointer at the end. So three pointers we are using. There will be one pointer which will be keeping record of ones. Right now, okay, they have used the word current for that pointer. You can okay both us. You can assign this variable name as p1 also. So okay, let me use current only according to this logic. I'm just applying that. So current is also here. Or means P1 is also here. Three pointer we are using. P0 will be keeping rec record of. We will move P0 when we will find out the zero. We will move current, or you can say okay P1 when we will find out the one. We will move P2 when we will find out two. That's it. So you please help me in this. First of all, we we find out zero. We find out zero. So the moment you find out zero, zero should be at the left side. Now I can move my P1 P not pointer. I can move my P not pointer. Can I move this also? Actually, yes. We will move current pointer also. Why? Because current pointer should be at the end. The output should be like this. For this input, output will be like this: zero, 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 one, one, three ones are here and three twos are here. So at the end, your P not should be here. And your P1 or you can say current, whatever name you can give, it should be here. And uh, your P2 will come come here itself. That is moving this side actually. P2 is moving this side. So whenever we will finding two, we will in keep inserting at the back. Whenever we will finding zero, we will be inserting at the front. And whenever we will be having one, we will keep it as it is, and we will be keep moving this our current pointer. So let's do it. Let's do it. And you also please keep helping me in this. So this is the present scenario. When we find zero, what we will do? We will move our p naught. P naught we just move, and we move current also. Because one thing is sure, p one, p one will be will come after zeros only. So if zero is coming, then p one will also move because p one will also come after zeros even after ones. P one will come or current will come. Okay, let me call it current. Okay, next element. Next element is one. So next element is one. Should I move P not? No, I cannot move move P not because P not is keeping record record that okay. Whenever we will find out zero, I will I will then only move one. P not is saying this. Current can move. Current can move. Current say that okay. Whenever I I will find out one, I will move because this is keeping record of ones. You can say that okay, P one is keeping record of ones, or current can take taking the record of ones. After that, now we find P two. We find two. When we find two, actually we will put this two at the end. We know that two must be at the back side. So we will simply put swap this and this. Two will come here. One will come here. Okay. Again, I'm I'm saying I'm I'm at the current. I'm looking at the current. What is the value? One. The moment I find one, I will increment the current. I will increment the current. One I am finding, I am incrementing it. If two I am finding, if two I am finding, I am swapping is the last element. See, right now I put two. I will move this pointer also. I will move this pointer also. Now I find two, so put it at the last place. Swap it with the last element. Although the last one also two, it's okay, but. We will swap it. We will swap it because we know that we find two that should be at the last, and then I we can move our this pointer this side. Now current is having value two. Whenever that will finding the value two, what we are doing? We are swapping it with the last element. Last P two is here, so zero will come here. Now current value is zero. The moment you will find the zero, 
you will swap the current with p naught so zero will come here and one will come here here one is here one will come here okay so zero will go there and uh, we will move our p naught pointer and here is we have one we can move the current pointer also again one we can move the current pointer and when this time we have two so two and we are at the same position so after this okay we will swap two with two and move on and when current will pass over when current will be greater than p2 we can stop okay so this is what we are doing what we are doing is we are just performing three steps we are performing three steps in first step whenever we are finding zero whenever we are finding zero we are moving our p not pointer see we are moving our p not pointer but not only p not we are moving the we are uh, we are moving the current pointer also both we are moving the moment we are finding zero we are moving current pointer and p not pointer both we are moving fine whenever we are finding two we are swapping the current pointer with the last element last twoth pointer okay and moving the p2 to the left side this is also we have done third one whenever we are finding one one is related to current we are simply moving the current we are simply moving the current so this is the logic working behind this problem now you need to this is your, you need to check it carefully and you need to think over it again and you need to solve it now this problem yourself this is a nvidia problem and now you can think over it so that's it for today from my side actually i hope uh, you will not ask for any other homework today we have already given enough homework fine okay so that's it for today thank you then thank you everyone any doubt you can ask me anything you want to discuss we can discuss tomorrow we will come up with link list i will try that i will try to make link list very easy for you people very very easy here if you are finding is tough link list i promise today link list will be easy after tomorrow lecture then thank you thank you everyone and if you are finding this session this session or previous session helpful don't hesitate to write in the comment section okay that will increase the range of these lectures to other people also this is your duty if you are getting benefit other people should also get benefit from these sessions so if you are finding this session helpful sneha pandeep everyone please after going after write this please write in the comment section then thank you thank you everyone bye bye we will meet tomorrow good night i am ending this session